Hi, it's Jeff Core, your Lean Six Sigma coach, and in this video, we take a look at how to get your data ready for using Sigma Excel. Tamisha, one of our Wave 1 Greenbelt champions, asked this question, and the best way to answer that is to show you in this quick video. The first thing we're going to do to get ready is think ahead. At some point, you're going to be in the Analyze step where you want to take a spreadsheet of clean data and use different graphical and statistical tools to analyze it for patterns and validate relationships. We want this to go stress-free. We want it to be fast, we want it to be easy, we don't want any obstacles, and we don't want to have to do anything a second time. Therefore, we need a proper data set, a spreadsheet that is Sigma Excel compliant, and that means we want something formatted where your data is in columns, not rows, it has to be in columns. You want a heading for each of the variables in the columns as well. Note that this is looking at raw data. You cannot use a summary report. There should be no formulas in any cells. There should be no line breaks or summary totals or graphics of any kind in this analysis. It's just raw data in columns. Each column has a label, and there should ideally be no empty cells. So like much of what we do in Lean Six Sigma, we begin with the end in mind. At some point, you're going to be in the measure step, and you've just done your fishbone diagram. You brainstormed potential X factors that you might want to go out and measure to see if they impact your CTQ or Y variable. So thinking ahead, we're going to ask ourselves, when I get to analyze, what chart or graph would best help me determine if this X factor is really impacting Y? And also, what statistical analyses might I want to do to help verify these relationships? You'll remember that the fishbone diagram allows you to brainstorm all of these things that we might want to potentially measure. Then we're going to refer to our X-Factor worksheet that you got in training, which will give us some extra questions to ask to make certain that we have all of the different stratification variables in place, so that when we get to analyze, we can slice and dice and answer all the questions we want to about the center shape and spread, who, what, when, and where, and so on. All of this feeds into your data measurement plan. This data plan is a standard deliverable for the measure step, and in it we're going to list all of the X factors and the Y that we want to measure. We'll operationally define it, figure out how much data to get, who's going to get it, where they're going to get it, so on and so forth. Once you have that, your data measurement plan really is the blueprint for your spreadsheet. Once you have your data measurement plan figured out, you should be able to draft out exactly what you want your spreadsheet to look like, so that when you get to analyze, you'll be able to do everything you planned on doing. At this point, you will be met with several different scenarios. The first scenario is collecting fresh data. Now, black belts and green belts love doing this for a couple reasons. Number one, is that this data is collected using your operational definitions, your sampling protocols, and it's data that you can guarantee is going to be good. The downside of doing this is that it takes time and it takes resources. But let's look at what we're going to do if you decide to pursue this path of collecting fresh data. We have your draft spreadsheet, and you may go off and collect data using data collection forms where people write things down on pieces of paper. You might use a concentration diagram where you are capturing data on a picture of whatever it is you're studying. You may be going around with a stopwatch and taking timings off of things and then writing that down on pieces of paper or in different spreadsheets. Heck, you might even use a survey. Once you have that data and it starts coming in, you can simply create your spreadsheet from scratch. You will type that data in from all these different sources as you collect it and then you will know that you have a spreadsheet you can trust with good data following your definitions and your sampling protocols. Then when you get to analyze, you'll be assured that you have everything that you want. But that doesn't always happen. Another scenario would be a green belt pulling data from an existing computer system in their organization. We hear this an awful lot when it comes to creating the baseline on a process where this process is already being measured and we simply want to pull the data from our system and draw the baseline. If you find yourself in this situation, there's really three ways to go about getting this data out of your system and into a Sigma Excel compliance spreadsheet. 
So let's march through these. The first scenario involves going to your IT department or your IT person if you're lucky enough to be in an organization where you have a person in it. What you can do is take your data measurement plan and from that you build a prototype spreadsheet. This is what you want your spreadsheet to look like when you get to the analyze step. You can list all of the columns and you can either leave them blank or maybe put some data into those columns to show the IT person that this field should be a date formatted a certain way, this column should be text data, this other column should be numeric, and so forth. Then you go to your IT department and you say, hey, I need a spreadsheet that looks like this in order to do my project. Is there any way you can pull data out of our system and put it in this format for me? Sometimes the IT people are able to give this to you 100% of what you're asking for. Other times, maybe they're off a little, but maybe they can give you 80% of what you're asking for, which is a lot better than having to go off and do all of this by hand. The second scenario you might find yourself in is that you don't necessarily have an IT department that can cooperate with you. Go ahead and create your prototype spreadsheet, and then as you recruit people to be on your team, you get someone on your team whose sole purpose on the team is to help with accessing this data. That might be somebody from IT, but it could be somebody that has nothing to do with IT, but they're just a person who is really knowledgeable about your internal systems, and they are the best around at being able to pull data out of those systems. And know that we probably don't need an awful lot of their time. We just need them in a few key points when we're trying to collect data and then we go to this person and we say, hey, given your knowledge of these different systems, is there any way you can pull the data from our systems and put it into this format for me? And then lastly, you might find yourself in this situation where you're doing a Greenbelt project by yourself. You have no helpers. Maybe you have no IT department or maybe you do have an IT department, but you've got no access to anybody there who's going to help you. In that case, you have to learn to do this yourself and you're going to ask can I pull data from our system and put it in the format that I want well one of the things that you have going for you is in Excel they have a lot of features to try to make getting external data easy if you go to the data tab in Excel now this is regular Excel not Sigma Excel just regular old Excel has this feature go to the data tab and they have a feature called get external data where you can extract data from access databases, you can pull it from the web, and other sources. Another powerful function is called get and transform. So as you pull this data in, you are transforming it into the way you want to see it. They even have data tools, so if you're pulling in text data, you can put that into columns, or if you want to eliminate duplicates from your data, you can do that. It will help you do a lot of things. That's the good news. The bad news is there is a learning curve in order to do this. Not only do you need to learn how to do this in Excel, you need to learn something about your own internal systems as well. But to learn about Excel, you can go to Microsoft.com and under the support area, type in Excel tutorials and you will find some free tutorials that help you get started. There are also many books on this. There are classes you can take. You can go to LinkedIn Learning and so on. But if you are in a real hurry, and these are combat level tactics here, you're in a hurry, you don't have a lot of time, you have to see if you can do this right now for yourself. You can go to YouTube, and there are a lot of people who have put different videos out there on how to obtain data from other sources and bring it into Excel as easy as possible. Here's the link for just one of those videos, and I'll put this under our video as well so you can just click on it. This video just looks at how to use the Get and Transform feature in Excel to pull data in from other sources and create a proper data set. I like the way this fellow teaches it because his data set would be easily compliant with Sigma Excel. So if you find yourself in the do-it-yourself category, there are many options. It's going to take some time to learn this, but once you do, you may find that it's pretty easy after that for you to get the data you want and have it all set up using these extraction routines that you'll create. So those are some of the options to help you get your data ready to use in Sigma Excel, and I really wish you the best in your project.
If you found this video helpful, give it a like and a share, and be sure to check out articlesbyjeffcole.com for more.